Madam Speaker, the government of Dominica has adopted a policy of ensuring that all Dominican families have the chance of pursuing educational opportunities at all levels. Madam Speaker, we applaud all those who have taken the initiative to pursue studies in a range of disciplines and subjects. However, having arrived at this juncture of our development, there is need to refocus training on the specific expertise required to advance our development agenda. We salute all those who have already seized the opportunity in that respect, as we equip our citizens with the knowledge and skills necessary for achieving the vision of building a new and modern Dominica. To encourage study in the areas that the, economy, the country needs most, we propose to amend the guidelines under which educational assistance is provided at the tertiary level. This will include a review of the priority list used by the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development and other institutions like the Aid Bank and the Dominica Social Security. Towards that end, the Ministry of Education has written to critical agencies in the private sector and civil society to get their input into the formulation of the final list of priorities. The conditions that will apply to full, spons full sponsorship and part sponsorship will also be specified. There will be an approved list of universities that pros prospective students can attend if they are to be assisted. Madam Speaker, there are three specific areas within education to which, to which special attention will be paid. One, government has seen the need to improve the physical facilities to ensure that students who are physically challenged have equal and ease of access to education. <laughs> to complement the physical infrastructure, government for the Ministry of Education will be introducing special training of teachers to teach students with special needs in our country. The training will also include a component of engaging parents of children with special needs so that adequate support is provided within the family to address the needs of these children. But, Madam Speaker, in the second decade of the 21st century, we should not have parents making choices, parents with children with special needs making choices as to whether to send their children to school or the children home, or whether to work or be unemployed. And I've met too many parents in Dominica who have had to make a choice of staying away from the workplace to care for the children. And this government is committed to putting an end to this and ensuring that our children with special needs are part of our mainstream society. <laughs> so we'll not only be training teachers, but we'll also be providing parents with the wherewithal and the knowledge and skills and the resources required to ensure that the children can live decent lives in our country. The second area, Madam Speaker, of focus for government is support for postgraduate study. In many disciplines, the capacity available is limited to undergraduate degrees. There is need to improve the level of specialization in a number of key disciplines in our country. That process has already, has already started in the health sector, where priority has been given to training of doctors in specialties that were not previously ready, readily available in Dominica. Capacity deficits in other disciplines will be captured in the priority list. So we are embarking on a program to aggressively take our, our young people from the undergraduate level to postgraduate level to have more PhDs and to have more uh, master's degrees in our country to, to take our country to the level which we'd like to take it, Madam Speaker. And the third, Madam Speaker, government also proposes to direct some financing to some critical areas which appear to be in short supply and which are necessary to complement government's investments in other areas. One critical area of need is a skill set needed to maintain and sustain the investments in the tourism sector. To grow the tourism sector, there is need for efficient, well-trained frontline staff who can provide quality customer service at all levels of the industry. The government therefore proposes to provide support to people intending to pursue studies 
in such di disciplines as hospitality, hotel management, culinary arts, landscaping, carpentry, masonry, tile laying, and other hotel maintenance services. In addition, skills required in the manufacturing sector, such as those of equipment maintenance officers, mechanical engineers, and technicians are in high demand, and this sector will also receive support. Through the Dominica State College, government will partner with the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association to implement an aggressive training program to develop a pool of frontline employees for the hotel and restaurant sector. It is proposed that the hospitality apprenticeship training program will be expanded. This apprenticeship program will provide training in the following areas, bartending, front desk operations, reception, wait service, housekeeping, and food preparation, introduction to tourism, and customer service. <clears throat> this program will run over a period of 12 weeks and will include classroom and on-the-job training and will target 50 individuals in the first instance. In addition, the Ministry of Tourism and Urban Renewal is working with the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development on a CBQ tourism training program which will focus on introducing CBQ Level 1 and 2 certification for the tourism sector. The intention, Madam Speaker, it is to train interested people at a tertiary level and that they be granted diplomas and postgraduate diplomas. Where necessary, the Dominica State College will need to work with other tertiary institutions, such as the University of the West Indies and the University of Technology Jamaica in the development of the relevant curriculum and accreditation of the programs being offered. For all of the critical areas mentioned, government will provide grants to qualified individuals to pursue these courses of study. The relevant budgetary provision of $3 million is included in the budget. Investing in skills is critical, Madam Speaker, to realizing our vision. We appreciate that our trading initiatives are extensive and have grown somewhat incrementally, and we will recommend that the NFPP reviews all fiscal expenditures on training to examine whether there are ways of making our spending even more effective and relevant, and where there may be positive linkages with the rest of the economy. <clears throat>